Hey guys, Brian here from Liquid Concepts. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the things that I wish that I knew about a hydrographics company or business before I actually started my own business. So as you probably know, uh, we started um, a long time ago in the hydrographics uh, industry as a whole, and um, I had no clue. I literally just sat there and I was like, you know what, I wanna get into this, and then I just started buying some things and then trying it, and then trying it, and then trying it, and then trying it again, and then I think I tried it one more time, and then I got really mad, and then I started throwing things, and then I tried it again, and then it was it was a nightmare. And so, like throughout the whole thing, it was just um, one thing after another, after another, after another. And so, um, to kind of help you guys out with getting your business started for the hydrographics, I figured we'd shoot a quick little video on things that I wish that I knew before getting into the hydrographics business. So let's get started so number one find a reputable supplier um, whenever I was getting started uh, it was definitely uh, not like it is today there was only a couple of suppliers out there and pretty much it was very um, uh, very hard to find anything else on the internet that was back whenever there wasn't any videos out there wasn't anything like that and so you pretty much had to rely on a supplier to help you out with any of your film needs your paints your primers your clear coats anything like that and so once I found that it definitely Definitely made it a lot easier and it made the business itself work a lot better because inevitably whenever you're starting out on this you may not know everything that you need to know or there may be ways that you can do things that are a lot easier by just listening to a supplier that's already done it before so um, just kind of like what we have started here with liquid concepts as a supplier for the distribution of anything hydrographics related we try to make that help you as well because inevitably we have done that before so of course uh, with our knowledge and things like that we can help you get started a lot easier a lot quicker with anything hydrographics related so for number one definitely find a supplier that you can trust a supplier that knows what they're talking about and a supplier that has a very good amount of material whether it be paints primers clears hydrographics film activator anything like like that definitely want to find something like that the so number two definitely get the training so whenever I got all set up and I was going through that um, I'm not gonna lie I was cheap I was like you know what I can figure this out I can get this and um, looking back on it now that was one of my worst mistakes because without getting the proper training I pretty much had to teach myself everything all on my own and um, now I'm a lot happier because I learned all the things not to do and then I learned what to do. And so um, it was definitely nice having that, but at the same time, it dramatically extended my ability to get going faster. So, um, you know, I pretty much trained myself for uh, at least probably a year to a year and a half before I felt a lot more comfortable on being able to take jobs in and know that I can comfortably do them successfully whenever we get a job. And so um, uh, definitely if I would have known the things that I know now whenever I was getting started, I would definitely pay for the training because for me, I cannot even tell you the amount of time and materials and everything, redos and all of that, that I have done because I really just didn't know what I was doing whenever I was starting out. I was just like, oh yeah, that can work. And I'd try it and guess what? Didn't work. So you know what? It spent more time, more electricity, more materials, more of everything to redo the part again when in reality I could have had a training and then I would have known what I was doing to begin with and had a better understanding of the coding and then I would have had a better chance of succeeding in a lot quicker time frame. So definitely go for the training if you have the funds or try to make it available as soon as you can if you don't. So number three, practice all right um, with me I was able to practice a lot because I was cheap and I didn't want to go to training but 
pretty much what I've seen a lot of people is is that they take on jobs that they really don't need to take on and so uh, I see it quite a bit and even on myself I took on jobs that um, I had a tank that was only 24 inches wide but I took on a whole motorcycle a full crotch rocket that had that had fairings that were over 40 to 48 inches wide so trying to fit that in a 24 inch wide uh, tank it's almost impossible uh, so you know just having the practice on doing more and more jobs so then that way I know what I can and can't do because whenever I was first getting started there was a lot of things that I was like oh yeah I can do that that's no problem at all and then I would get it and I was like I probably shouldn't have took on this job but I guess I'm gonna have to finish it because I took it on so having the knowledge and definitely the practice in knowing that okay I've done jobs like this before or I've done a lot of practice stuff or you know I've went to a junkyard and grabbed parts just to be able to dip them to figure them out and so you know having that practice and having that experience like that definitely really helps because then whenever you're talking to a customer you can um, comfortably say that okay that job right there I can definitely do because I've done jobs like that before instead of blindly just saying oh yeah I can do that and then at the end of the day in reality you can't do that because you don't have a large enough tank or you don't have the skill level to do that or the worst part is is that you do the job and then you end up not being able to do it but yet you've already painted your customers parts you've already cut um, you know pretty much scuffed everything down you've already ruined the original factory finish that was possibly already on there so now you have to pretty much redo that whole thing again and hope that it comes back out factory so definitely having that practice really helps in knowing that the jobs that you take in you feel a hundred percent comfortable and you know that you can complete those in a good and timely fashion and of course not taking you know months and months to do a project number four so number four is going to be not every customer is probably going to be your best customer and what I mean by that is is that a lot of the times you get a lot of tire kickers and sometimes it's easier to just let the job go than it is to take on the job a hundred percent and what I mean by that is is that I have had throughout the course of my life and I'm sure everybody that's been in business they have always had these customers um, you know what if you do this one job for me and uh, you can do this for like fifty dollars then I've got tons of buddies that has all these parts that they want to get done and all these things and so you're like oh yeah starting out a business hey that's great I want more business so let me go ahead and do that for fifty dollars guess what those buddies never show up so then you've pretty much just done a hundred and fifty dollar job for fifty dollars because you were anticipating these buddies to show up and probably 95 percent of the time if I had to guess they never show up nobody ever shows up and what we've found over the years of doing that is that um, there's always those types of customers out there and um, you know you you can't you can't prevent it you know there's there's nothing you can really do about it but um, for us what we found is is that um, it's easier to approach a customer like that in saying that you know what for my work I do a good quality job so if I'm gonna do it it's either gonna be this price and then you know what if you send me a buddy later I'll give you a kickback I'll give you 20 bucks off of your next order or I'll give you fifty dollars for sending me that customer if they have a five hundred dollar job if they have a thousand dollar job whatever but you see where I'm going with this so then that way whenever you do a job and it's a good job it's a very good job that you know a normal person would pay hundred and fifty dollars for but you did it for fifty in hopes that you get more business later nine times out of ten it never works out like that that guy got a heck of a deal on that job and sure he might tell his buddies but most of the time I hate to say it but those buddies are probably broke and he's the only guy that actually has some money to actually spend on stuff um, or the second thing is is that 
he never tells anybody and pretty much you just did that job for fifty dollars so at the end of the day um, you wasted all of your time all of your energy you may have made ten dollars off of the job if you're lucky um, and that's all you have to show for it. you got maybe some pictures but that's about it and so uh, what we found is is that you know as we were starting out there's there's always those types of people that will show up and come to you and say hey you know what I got this and I got that and if you do this then I can do that and I'm not saying that everybody is like that uh, definitely not each uh, you know each situation is very different um, you know we've had some jobs that were uh, even really good friends of ours and they turned out amazing we've gotten a lot of business off of it and so you know don't take what I'm saying uh, as a blanket statement for everybody because not everything is like that we've gotten really good jobs out of doing um, you know work at a uh, discounted level and then we've granted grown with that and it's gotten us a lot more in the end so uh, I'm not saying that that's everybody but um, a lot of people a lot of customers just off the street just getting started whenever they see a business like that they will definitely try to haggle with you and you know that's one thing that you definitely want to make sure of is whenever you're starting up your business if you have a set price try to stay at that set price your time is valuable your work should be worth the amount of money that you're spending and so um, if it's not worth it to them then that's fine but it will be to the next person that comes in your door so you know you may not get the work now but over time you will start to get the work that comes in that the customers appreciate the time and the effort that's involved in doing those pieces and paying you correctly for the job that you're doing so definitely make sure that you don't make that mistake like we did whenever we were first starting out so number five equipment um, this is a big one and so whenever I was first starting out inevitably like a lot of people um, I didn't have a lot of money to spend and so I tried a lot of the DIY stuff um, I didn't have a fully sufficient paint booth and I didn't have you know a hundred percent wash station and things like that but I made it by and so um, the biggest thing that I can tell you on this is is that um, don't skimp on the equipment because the equipment is like a tool and if you have a good tool that works really well it makes your job and your life a lot easier um, especially for me the biggest thing the best thing that I found starting out was the paint guns and so of course paint guns are going to be tools in our industry and so um, definitely do not skimp on the paint guns um, you know the the other thing is is um, a dip tank uh, I know a lot of people do a DIY dip tank you can usually find those um, online you can find used ones uh, Facebook marketplace eBay things like that um, just starting out you know um, and so pretty much that's what I did I actually bought a used hydrographics tank whenever we uh, first got started and so that definitely helped me in growing the business because I didn't have uh, a whole bunch of money right out front I was able to sell a few things get a tank and then get started with it a lot cheaper and so usually that's the route that a lot of people would go and that's and that's great starting out it showed me what I liked what I didn't like about that piece of equipment or this piece of equipment or anything like that and so now of course uh, now as you've probably seen in all of our videos we have a full professional tank if I was to do it over again I'd buy that thing tomorrow because it makes everything go so much easier so much smoother um, I know that if anything goes out on that I can make a phone call and I have a warranty part of course for us because we make these then I can just replace it and we're up and going but same thing with a company that you buy a, a machine from like that you know it does make it very nice in having the peace of mind that it's gonna work whenever you turn it on 
and then everything functions the way that it needs to. Same thing with your paint guns. As I was talking about that earlier, your paint guns are definitely the first line that everybody sees whenever they look at your part because they're seeing the finish on it. They're seeing the gloss, the flat, how smooth it laid out, things like that. Uh, I used to have a lot of cheap Harbor Freight guns and a lot of cheap, you know, eBay guns and stuff like that. And I soon realized that they were just that. They were cheap. They weren't worth it. And so whenever I started spending a lot more money on the tools, the paint guns that I was using, it made everything look so much better. It brought my entire coating to the next level and it made everything to where now I can charge what I feel is appropriate for that coating because I am doing a better coating. It's getting a better overall finish, things like that. So definitely for number five, whenever you have the ability to, definitely invest in the equipment and the tools that you need to get it done right. Because at the end of the day, it will greatly help you as a business owner at the end of the day. All right, so bonus. The biggest thing that people always think is that, oh, it's super easy. You just dip it in and then it's done. Definitely not the case. Uh, of course, whenever I saw it, I was like, oh, it's super easy. You just do this. Like, but there's got to be something else, you know? And so then I quickly learned there's a lot of something else. So definitely don't have that mindset on, oh, this is super easy. You take the part, you dip it in the water, you pull it back out. It's like that. If that was the case, just remember this everybody would be doing it if it's that easy. And trust me, it's not. So definitely have the mindset of being able to look at things, figure out what's wrong, and have that mindset like that because it is definitely not a quick in and out like you see a lot of the times in our videos and then everything's done because uh, there's a lot of things that happen on the back end that you that we don't film as far as the prep work and the painting and the clear coating and the touch-ups and a lot of that stuff that definitely goes into making the coating the way that it needs to be. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Of course, we always love making these videos like this. Um, if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them below. We'd love to hear from you on anything hydrographics related or uh, you know, if I missed something. Uh, if you started up a business and you're in the hydrographics film, uh, or hydrographics industry and you know there's something that that you found that uh, you wish that you knew uh, definitely leave it in the comments below we'd love to hear from you on that um, I'm Brian from liquid concepts and this is how we customize your world we'll see you guys next time